A leaf turned into a bird, and we both saw it. By you slash, can I please be a cat? I'll set the scene and explain what happened. This occurred in Australia. My partner and I had some time off and decided to go camping. We were in the last small town or suburb before the road off into the rainforest. We went shopping for food and ice as supplies to put in our esky, and it was earlyish in the morning at about 7.20 a.m. We had done our grocery shopping and had got ourselves a snack for breakfast, and we parked up in our van at a park in town. He was driving and I was the passenger, and we had stopped so we could munch down our food. We were both looking out the windscreen at the park, there was a breeze and, occasionally, leaves were falling from the trees around the area. Then, we both saw the same thing. We noticed that one of the leaves wasn't quite falling properly. Somehow, it seemed to be defying gravity a little, and it caught both of our eyes. The leaf landed and we were both fixated on it at this point. It twirled around a little in the breeze. And then, it was suddenly a bird. It kind of ruffled its wings, hopped a couple of times, and then flew off. I could tell he saw it, and we both looked at each other, and we were absolutely gobsmacked. Then we were like, Did you just see that? I have no explanation. We were both straight and sober, and saw a glitch. Or... Was it a shared hallucination? I am reticent to believe that it was a momentary folly ado situation. This is just one of the unexplainable events that I have witnessed. However, it is one of the most perplexing. Disappearing Object Phenomenon by U slash Kisanthro Okay, so my bedroom's TV remote is missing. My partner and I spent over an hour looking for it, and it doesn't leave the bed or side tables. We tore apart our room searching, but with no luck. This one is weird because we haven't found it yet. We've looked everywhere it could possibly be, looked at other places that we could have maybe brought it on accident. I even checked my car because I went to grab something after being in my room in the afternoon, thought maybe I brought it out there without realizing it. We fall asleep to the TV and always turn on a sleep timer. I remember I gave the remote to him to handle that last night because I was just really exhausted. I tossed the remote in between us. He did the thing and it stayed on the bed in between us and I passed out almost immediately. I've mentioned to him before that I'm convinced something is playing tricks on me because items will often go missing for me. Then, turn up where I've already looked in very obvious places. I googled ghost stealing remotes and found out about disappearing object phenomena. I researched that a bit and read that in some cases, the cost could be a dimensional shift. That reminded me that last night I was dreaming about being in another dimension. I don't remember any specific part of the dream, aside from it being really neat and not wanting to wake up from it. This morning around 6 a.m., my partner jolts awake and says, Is someone knocking at the door? This wakes me up from that strange dream and I'm confused but know that no one is at the door because my dog would have been going insane barking. He goes back to bed, and I lay there trying to go back to my cool other dimension dream with no luck. We wake up at around 7.30 a.m. and I go about our normal daily routine. Time comes when we're going to bed, and the remote is gone. I am so confused. How bizarre is it that I had that dream and he randomly thought someone was at the door? and now the remote is nowhere to be found. I'm low-key freaked out about the whole thing, and I don't know why. 
but I feel that they are all related. Hallway heater logo that I've never seen before disappears the day after. By U slash Conscious Front 7875. Hey everyone, I have a very interesting singular occurrence. Do note that I am a skeptic, although I am very open minded and accept the possibility of some things existing or occurring outside of my or anyone else's understanding. In fact, I am very intrigued about Mandela effects and glitches happening, despite my skepticism, but that is enough about me. Yesterday, I was pondering around my hallway when I noticed something new, to say the least. On the rightmost side of my hallway heater, presumably dating from the 60s from when my apartment was built, I noticed something peering behind the green coat of paint that I've never seen before. And obviously, I have been through my hallway many, many times before. In large, blocky capital font read, Holly. I found this amusing since I have a character named Holly. I planned to take a picture but I had a ton of academic work to do and eventually forgot. Today, I went searching for the logo again and lo and behold, it wasn't there. Not even a trace. Where it was was smooth over paint like there has been for years, not even an indentation. I told my mom and even she had no idea what I was talking about. I searched online but I couldn't find anything matching what I saw. So I just thought that I'd share this here since I find it interesting. I'm pretty sure that my dad was at work by you slash hypnotis 3 r Hello, I really would like to hear your opinion about something that I experienced. I'm addicted to smoke, and the first thing that I think in the morning is smoking. My dad doesn't know that I'm a smoker, so I only smoke at home when he's at his job. So one day, I woke up and I went directly to my dad's bedroom to check if he's at home. His and my doors are always open because our cat sleeps with us and his bed was empty and didn't tidy up, so I did it for him. So I went to the kitchen and smoke and we laughed with my mom while we were watching the cat. My mom went to the living room and I was left all alone. I heard footsteps coming to the kitchen and I thought that I should put down the cigarette because my brother doesn't like that I am smoking. He always criticizes me for it. I opened the sink, extinguished the cigar, and then put it in the trash. But then, my dad said, Good morning. I was so surprised, because, as I said, I thought that he already left. He said he took the day off and was watching TV in his room. So, does this count as a glitch? It never happened to me before. I am 100% sure that he was not there, because I checked to not get caught, and I tidied up his bed. Ring from Alternate Timeline appeared in my dryer. By you slash Millennium Falcor. A little over a decade ago, I was married to a man and in the throes of a struggle with anorexia, which in hindsight, I think was inflamed by my inability or refusal to look at the fact that I'm gay. Needing to believe that staying in my marriage was the right thing to do, I began obsessing over a very specific and unusual ring that I wanted for a vow renewal. I hadn't gotten a ring the first time. This was a quantum or fantasy cut mystic topaz in white gold. That's important. And just to stress the point of how strange a ring it was, I used to work in fine jewelry, 
and have never saw one like it come through my store. Fast forward 10 or so years, past my reconciliation with my sexual orientation, my coming out, my recovery from anorexia, and marrying a woman to June of last year. I was preparing to go on a camping trip with my wife and two friends, and I was getting a couple of loads of laundry done before we had to leave. I heard something rattling around the dryer, but naturally, I assume it was a quarter or a button or something. When the cycle was done, I went to retrieve the clothes, and as soon as I opened the door, something fell onto the floor. A three-carat, quantum fantasy cut mystic topaz ring in 14K white gold. Incidentally, it's three sizes too small. I have turned this around in my brain so many times, examining it from every possible angle. The specificity of it is something that I've never been able to get over. This is the kind of ring you have made custom, and it fell out of my fucking dryer. It wasn't until today that it struck me. Could this have belonged to me in another timeline? One in which I never left my ex-husband, never came out, and never recovered. One in which I continued losing weight, had the vow renewal, and would need this very specific ring to be three sizes smaller than the size that I wear here and now. Though... My wife thoroughly believes it to be pure coincidence. I can't accept that. It's just too weird. My wife did not know about the ring, or at least it's very unlikely. To my recollection, I never mentioned it to her. It was tied to another life with another partner in a very painful time, which I didn't even really like thinking about, let alone discussing. I myself had put it out of my mind, and it wasn't until I found it that all those pictures that I'd saved to my old computer came rushing back to me. My wife and I wear the same ring size, also shoe size, so it's unlikely that she would have mistakenly bought or ordered given how unusual the ring is, such a small size. In case anyone is wondering, the ring is a 5.25, and my wife and I wear an 8.5. We also don't have the kind of money to make such purchases. My wife does not believe in manifestation and is one of the most honest and authentic people that I have ever known, so I can't imagine she would lie about not recognizing it. I don't know what she would stand to gain. It's extremely unlikely that my ex purchased the ring for me before we split up and could not have been hidden in my clothes, only to come loose from a pocket after this year's. My ex was not a gift giver. I think the only gift he has ever bought me was a paperback book for one birthday. He was not a fan of the idea of a vow renewal, and I think the idea was largely an obsession or personal fantasy to distract me from the internal crisis that I was avoiding. Further, my style and size have changed dramatically since he and I were together. I can think of only one garment that I still own, that I owned at the time and it's an oversized t-shirt that I sometimes sleep in, which has no pockets just to mention. On the same theme... I now live in a different house in a different town and have since a few months after he and I split up. How I Accidentally Jumped Into a Different Universe to Avoid Dying by you slash Meta Mara Redbird I am a Cherokee Indian Meta Cherokee word for prophetess, we can see and interact with spirits from birth, so tons of really awesome paranormal stuff happens to me constantly. I always say that I am so sad for people that don't believe in the true blue magic of life and reality, because it's as if they can only get to see life in black and white. Sad that 
I'm sure some people won't even believe this, and that breaks my heart. But I swear on my daughter and the spirits that this is a hundred percent true, and not one bit exaggerated. Anywho, I was around 16 and was with my first ever love, who unfortunately wasn't the greatest influence, and also my cousin. We were getting a ride home from my ex's best friend, it was also my cousin's boyfriend, and he was on a lot of Xanax. We were weed smokers, but nothing else, as I've always been a good girl. It was very late at night, and we didn't want to bother our parents to drive an hour out to us just to pick us up. Besides, me being a meta, we know the spirits always have our backs. He kept on slamming on the brakes thinking it was the clutch, which was so annoying. But the worst was when he would completely fall asleep at the wheel and we had to scream at him to wake him up. We were all in the back seat because my cousin was fighting with him bad because he took Xanax again after promising not to and that's why none of us could grab the wheel. Well, fast forward and we were on the interstate and he is flying. We kept asking him to slow down, which he does, but then being on Xanax, forgets and then speeds up again. One time, he sped up so fast and fell asleep at the wheel right as a massive curve in the road happens and of course, our screams were to no avail. My ex started punching him also to no avail. So we just screamed and braced for impact as soon as we saw that the car was inches from the concrete wall. And as we braced, we either closed our eyes or covered our faces and screamed in terror to then realize that nothing happened. So when we all open our eyes and look, the car is going perfectly straight and we were long after the massive curve. We were so shocked and still to this day talk about it. We always wonder what really happened and what we would have seen had we not closed our eyes in terror. I really think that if any of us would have opened our eyes, we would have wrecked. I love to study a lot of quantum physics, and I think the whole wave-slash-particle thing applies here. Only, when not observing can the particle become a wave and act spooky. <laughs> Narrative Causality, Lost Gold Ring by U slash 3 Lit 3 Hawks This is a story about the day that I felt that I was actually within someone else's story, but I was also able to control the way the story developed because of this. There is of course a known set of theories about narrative causality, the fact that we all fictionalize our own lives and events rather than experience a series of semi-random events in our lives, we prefer to give a nice shape to what happens, and this is part of being human. These theories begun in philosophy and literature, and over time, have developed into sci-fi tropes and new ideas about reality and artificial simulated universes. We've come a long way from the frame devices used by Shakespeare, via fairy tales with Once Upon a Time, then to the Enlightenment, and of course, Descartes, Cogito Ergo Sum. We then develop up into modern philosophy and science with the rise of science fiction, stories from Philip K. Dick, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, more modern, the rise of William Gibson and his Neuromancer. We then get a huge rush with The Matrix, Truman Show, Terry Pratchett's Discworld, Avengers and the Multiverse, plus Inception and many others. So the idea that we may all be living within a story is not new and seems to be a returning common thread of our existence. I myself have always believed in the same ideas, even before I was aware of those mentioned above. At the age of eight, I discussed with my friend the fact that everyone could be actors, 
even my parent, though I couldn't explain why that would be. I also discussed with him the idea that we could just be brains in tanks, and perhaps experiencing all this virtually long before VR and computers. It's interesting that I read at that time about the Native American Indians who had an idea that we may be a dream in a god's mind, and if he wakes up, then we blink out of existence. So clearly, these were all very powerful ideas that I recognize as such a young age. As you may tell from this story, I went on to study such ideas at university and so have a good understanding of such ideas. Mixed with this, I have also studied Kabbalah, magic, and the ideas associated with the occult. One of the key threads in the most magical systems is that you are able to undertake a series of rituals which enable you to place some level of control or will on the actual universe. This is in effect writing your own story, or reality, if you like an idea as promulgated by Timothy Leary. All this preamble is to show that I am someone who is well aware of these ideas and should recognize if I am within a story or surrounded by it. So, the lead into this story is that my brother-in-law lost his wedding ring on the beach playing volleyball. This is in Cornwall, and the beach is small. He actually saw the ring fly off as he hit the ball. Sadly, he tried to get his wife and two daughters to help him search. First of all, his wife took the loss of the ring as a bad omen for the marriage, and then blamed him for losing it. Secondly, they messed up the search area, ran around and generally made a mess, and didn't find anything. Worse still, they didn't record the area, where it exactly was lost or any way to precisely recall the spot. When you want to recover any item like this, making sure you know as near as possible to get the lost spot so you can then initiate a decent search. Anyway, they didn't do this, and they also didn't find it. Luckily, the beach is small there. Also, the water doesn't come that high up so a good chance that the ring was still there. He called me up and asked me when I came down a month later to Cornwall to bring my metal detector, and I am somewhat known for finding lost items. I did, and so late August we arrived in Cornwall and agreed to visit the beach the next day. I had bought my metal detector along as well as a bucket, spade, and sea. You see... Part of searching is also making sure you check the sand you move, and sieving can be as helpful as metal detecting, and sometimes even more so. We started early the next day and my family, wife and two sons, met up with my brother-in-law, his wife and their two daughters. We started off with high hopes, and he indicated the area where he thought it was, and we then added an extra two meters every side in all directions, so we had an area in which we could guarantee the ring was. We then started searching first with much gusto and enthusiasm, everyone helping and working our way up and down, and also sieving the sand. Our spirits were high and it was a lovely day. There was some argument between his wife who told us that if the ring was not found, she felt the marriage was over and it was an omen. Also, his daughter said he was looking in the wrong place, but, but couldn't tell us where the right place was. Anyway, we searched and search, and now as I am an old hand at this, I know it takes time, and people usually give up too soon. As I explain the whole thing is this, all we have to do is ensure that the ring is within 40 centimeters of the metal detector, and we will find it. Luckily, this beach was lovely soft sand, and there was absolutely no false signals. Usually, there was in fact no ring pulls, nails, iron, or tinfoil at all. Anyway, we searched and sieved, and as time went by, one by one, the others drifted off to play, or go in the water and etc. Anyways, as time went on, we started to get worried, even me. 
my brother-in-law said to my son. It's sad, because you will always look back at this day as the day that you tried to find your uncle's wedding ring and failed. His wife then chopped in. No, it's the day that you didn't find the ring and your uncle got divorced. So it was clear as day that even on this day, people there were aware of the story and the moment and were already fictionalizing what we would refer to this story as. This base increasingly powerful as time went on, as most of us had thought we might find the ring. And as time went, we realized it was less likely. We even got to the point where I was going to pack up and decided after searching the area twice that we wouldn't find it. I was sad, given the way that this looked like we faced failure in the face. I thought, in such stories, what you do is try one last mad roll of the dice, right? You try something crazy, and in stories, that works and we seem to be in a real story mode at that moment. So, I said the following very deliberately. You may as well try and look for it yourself, even you're a novice using the detector, because maybe you will have more of an attraction, as it's your ring, and we have only five minutes left, so it won't hurt to try. So my brother-in-law started, and it's harder to use a detector than people think. He was waving it around and going along, and my sons were watching him. After five minutes, one said to him, Uncle, are you sure you have it turned on? Because I can't hear it buzzing. Well, my son checked, and he hadn't even turned it on. Anyway, we turned it on for him again, and he started. Because we were still sieving sand, he politely walked around us to avoid us, all having to move. Although, this took him well out of the maximum search area. Well, he suddenly got a loud buzz, so I went over to have a look. He tried again, and it buzzed. And so I said, well, it's something, and let's have a look. I pushed my hand into the place where I thought the object might be, and it came up with the sand all dripping away and a solid large gold ring in my palm. It was unbelievable. You could not have made the sequence better in a movie. We were all of course static and excited and surprised. He worked it out eventually that he might have been badly mistaken about where he had lost it, and it was much closer to a large rock than he thought. Of course, the sequence was so strange that he found the ring after maybe one minute of searching. He only found the ring because he looked in the wrong place. He only looked in the wrong place because we were all still searching in the right place which was wrong. Plus, he only got a chance to search as a last ditch try by me to make the story come good. The incredible thing about this story is the fact that at least three of us and likely more, were all aware that there was some powerful narrative playing out that day. The fact that we were all already creating narratives around. The day we went to look for the ring on the beach was odd, to say the least. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.